morning, everyone. Uh, I think we're just going to give it a couple more minutes before we get started here. Let some additional folks join, but we will be starting momentarily. Thank you for joining. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and begin the training. My name is Brian Hyman. I'm the data product manager here at RELSI, and thank you for registering and attending this group training session. Our client success manager, Ashley Sisko, is on the line as well, and will be participating in the Q&A portion at the conclusion of this session. These sessions should act as initial trainings for new users and a great refresher for more experienced users. Again, they're gonna occur twice per month and you can find all of the relevant information for future training sessions right here. If you click on the training link from your homepage. We're also gonna be updating this uh, with notes regarding future sessions as well as recordings of past sessions. So our first session, the recording is right here. So if you missed our first session, we had two of them in February, as you can see. Uh, but you can go ahead and just click the video here. You can also find it on our YouTube channel um, and, and hope that is helpful to all of you. We will, of course, be adding the recording for this session uh, to the training section here, um, corresponding for the March sessions as well. Uh, additionally, we're gonna be sending out a quick survey uh, at the conclusion of the session. And it's solely to gauge how helpful this session was to all of you with the aim of improving future sessions. And in the survey, please feel free to submit any topics that you would like covered in future webinars. <clears throat> in this session, I'm gonna discuss integrating RELSI within existing workflows, tips for finding new connections, advanced tips and tricks for better leveraging our news engine, as well as lists. You also have the ability to submit any questions that you may have along the way via the question box found in GoToWebinar. And again, like I said, we're gonna leave room at the end 
for any questions that you may have. And if your question for any reason is not answered, sometimes we we get a lot of them and don't have time to cover every single one, feel free to reach out to us after the session. We'd be happy to answer any and all questions. All right, so getting started, I'd like to first direct your attention to our news engine. So we're gonna be talking about 360 news alerts. And you see your 360 news alerts right here from the home screen when you first log in. By default, your proprietary relationships are tracked in the news. So all of the relationships that you have allocated here, they're gonna be automatically enabled uh, so that they generate news alerts. If you wanna toggle these relationships on and off to prevent certain relationships from generating news alerts, you can go to my relationships page. I just clicked right here from the toolbar, my relationships popped into this page. These are all of your relationships right here. And you can simply click this alerts toggle right here on and off. And that's toggling my news alerts for all of my relationships. Now, if you wanna to toggle for specific relationships, you would just click the edit button right next to the alerts toggle right here. This allows you to individually select which relationships are capable of generating alerts. So, you know, for any reason, maybe someone's in a specific industry or works at a certain company that I'm not interested in seeing alerts for, but I still want to keep the relationship because I want them to affect things like power search results and, and my Pathfinder search results. Uh, I could just turn their alerts off so that I keep them in my relationship allocation here, uh, but they're not generating 360 news alerts. And again, you can also click this remove button to completely remove the relationship. So that will do both. That will obviously stop any alerts from being generated from that individual, and it will also remove them from your relationships, effectively ending any chance that uh, you generate paths through that individual. I'm just gonna go ahead and toggle these back on. And then you just click done right here to save your changes. So now that we've made sure all of our relationships are enabled to generate news alerts, we come back to the home page and we're gonna see what REL size news engine has captured. Now, in order for something to pop up here, we're just gonna wait for this to load, there we go. In order for something to pop up here, you need to have news alerts enabled for a profiled entity in RELSI, and we need to have both ingested a publication and tagged that entity, be it an individual or an organization, within that publication. So to clarify, if an individual was mentioned in the news, but we did not ingest that publication, you will not see it here. So it's possible that Tammy Jones, for instance, was mentioned in some publication that we don't have an ingestion with, you're not gonna see that news alert. Now we do have over 200 publications currently ingested by the RELSI news engine, but if there are additional publications that you would like RELSI to ingest, you can navigate to the RELSI services link right here and just click feedback and you can put whatever you want in here, uh, new publication, ingestion, and in the details, just say, I want X news ingested, whatever publication it is, um, you know, pretend we didn't have the New York Times or something like that. You could say, I want New York Times ingested by RELSI. And then just submit that, that'll go to our team and we'll review your, your requests, of course. Now, for a variety of reasons, we can't guarantee our ability to ingest a, a new publication, but if you leave feedback suggesting something specific, maybe it affects one of your use cases, we're certainly gonna look into it and do our very best to accommodate that request. Now let's go back to the home page. Now, if we click the news search button right here, 
we can get into some advanced news searches. Now, there are a few options here. You have people and organizations, and these are all options that allow you to search for a specific article or a specific instance where someone or some org was mentioned in the news. So if we wanted to search, say, relationships science, boop, uh, and we could enter a topic here like bankruptcy or earnings announcements, donations, anything like that, or a keyword, maybe, um, you know, CRM or um, whatever you're looking for, you could commit that search there. If you're looking for uh, news alerts that have been generated by, say, your relationships or your colleagues' relationships, or maybe your RHEL web or something like that, you could put that in here under relationships. Uh, if you're looking for news alerts that were generated by a list that you've created, say it's the Fortune 1000 list that I uploaded this morning, we could enter that in there and enter a keyword like, you know, NVIDIA or something that's, you know, super relevant in the news right now, or a topic. Again, same, same options here. You also have industries and charitable causes alumni of schools and organizations. So if I was looking for alumni of Lafayette College, where I went to school, and some topic, green energy, whatever, you could search that here. And then the most inclusive search option is the advanced search, which really takes into account all of these search options. Now we can search something here um, let's go back to that Fortune 1000 example. And let's just search that really quickly and see what that generates. So you see a lot of news alerts here popping up. Now you can very easily click into one of these articles, read up on it. You can share one of these articles. You can click any of these tags that we've put in here to go straight to that person's profile. Let's go to Gary's profile just to show you an example. And let's flip back to the article here. This is really great functionality to be able to read up on this article within the platform, quickly generate paths or share this with a colleague, go back to your news alerts, or access anyone or anything that's been mentioned in this article. Go back here. Now, if you were to click extended news, this would expand your search results to include headlines about the people and organizations connected to your original results. So it basically just allows you to dig further into your search while considering even more relevant publications. And it will also show any RHEL side data updates. I think I had a data update right here. Just to show you, this is what it looks like. See RHEL side data update. Now this is mentioned in line with your news alerts. So this isn't an article, this is an update that our research team made could be a new tagging or something like that. New role change detected in the news. So a little bit different from a news article, but valuable nonetheless. Now in this section, while you're searching, you can also easily set up custom news alerts. This is again by leveraging the advanced news search and then following the results of any one of those searches. So right here, we searched for Fortune 1000. Um, now let's say I want to include anyone in this search who went to Harvard. We'll run that again. This is a little bit more specific. So, okay, so there's nothing today for Harvard. But if you did want to filter this down a little bit more, 
you could implement anything from here. Maybe you wanted to search by your relationships or something like that. Whatever the case may be, you would implement your advanced news search here. You would run that search. Again, I'm searching by extended news right now. I could take that off if I'd like to narrow the search down just a little bit more. And then once this generates, here we go. I'm gonna follow this selection and click save. And then I'm gonna see that added right here under all alerts. So this is from the home page. If I go back, home page, my 360 news alerts. Again, I was in new search under advanced search. That's how I got here. I entered a search, ran it, and then followed the results of that search. And that ended up with a custom news alert, which gets saved here. So anytime I come back to the home page, I can very easily just click that news alert. And here are my results. And this will obviously update over time. Now let's scroll back up. Let's go into alert settings. Dig into the nitty gritty here. Now under user right here, you can see the email that is currently associated with your account. That's right here. So you have username and user email. That's where all of your news alerts are gonna be sent. And you can do some customization here with regards to how you want these news alerts sent. So I like to get mine weekly. You could switch to daily if you set up a lot of news alerts, might be more valuable for you. Or perhaps you don't like receiving email notifications and you prefer to come into the platform to receive your news alerts. In that case, you would select none. These options disappear. I'm gonna go back to weekly the way I had it. Now you can choose the format here. We have this little info icon to make this a little more understandable, but so for combined, users will receive all feeds in one email with articles from different feeds mixed together. Slightly different from uh, single, where you'll receive all of the feeds in one email, but the articles will be grouped by each individual feed. So each uh, alert that you've set up, so like the Fortune 1000, my relationships, following, Lafayette alumni, these will all be segmented within the report it sends you. Or you could get multiple emails, so you'll get one email for each one of these feeds. And you can also select the number of headlines that you permit for each one of these emails. So maybe it's only 10 net headlines, you just want the top 10. Or maybe you want as many as you can get, in which case you would select 100. Now we come down here to the alert feed. And this is where I can customize what actually gets pushed to me. So maybe I don't want, you know, my relationships uh, job changes search here. I don't want that included in my email, so I'm gonna turn that one off. I don't want my relationships either or who I'm following. And I don't want this webinar demo list sent. So I'm just gonna include a couple lists, uh, excuse me, custom alerts that I've enabled on my account. And these are the only three that will actually be emailed to me, but I'm still following all of these as you can see. So when I come into the platform, I'm still generating in-platform news alerts for all of these custom alert settings. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit of a transition here. Part of effectively leveraging 360 News depends on your ability to leverage and manage your lists in RELSI. So for that reason, we're gonna shift gears, like I said, and direct our attention to lists. Now we did cover this topic in our first webinar session where we demonstrated creating new lists, sharing lists, and reporting lists. And again, if you have any questions on these topics, you can navigate to the training section I showed you earlier in the session, where you can find our recorded version of the first webinar session where we covered these topics. Alternatively, you can also reach out to your client success manager 
they'd love to further clarify anything related to RELSI and more specifically lists. Now we've already covered searching our news engine for headlines specifically related to members of a given list, but I wanna go over some tips for efficiently building and filtering lists. You have some ability to filter and order lists within the list tool itself, which can be accessed right here from the toolbar. But what a lot of users tend to miss out on is the fact that you can also be using Power Search to filter and even bolster your lists. So if we navigate to Power Search, show you what I'm talking about here. So we'll start by building a list from scratch. And for this list, I'm going to say I want to look for individuals located in Manhattan who are, let's say, current board members. And they're affiliated with schools and student services. Let's run this list. Now, this is a pretty broad power search here, so we're probably going to generate thousands of results. And realistically, I'm not going to go through 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 results. So what we might want to do here, as soon as this fully generates, and there we go, we have 4,300 results. Now you can filter this quickly by looking at, okay, who's connected to my firm or who's currently listed in my relationships or my colleagues or my extended network. So people who are connected to me or my colleagues. But I'm gonna go back to all because I do want all of these people somehow included in this list. So let's add them. I actually did have a list for this already, so I'm going to add them to my Manhattan School Board's board members list. Save that. So they were just added to a list. But now again, this is this is way too extensive here. So I do want to filter this list down. Obviously, you can report this out as a CSV. We went over this last time. You can include some custom fields, and if you'd rather take this out uh, into Excel and filter it that way. By all means, you can do that. But if you think of Power Search really as a query engine, you can actually use it to effectively filter this list. So let's go here. Appears on is where you would enter the name of your list. So here's that list that I just created. Now let's think about how we want to filter this. Maybe I'm interested in reaching out to as mem many members of this list as I realistically can. But let's say I feel like looking at people who, again, went to my college. I just feel like it'll be easier to connect with people from my alma mater. And I'm also looking for people who specifically donated to some sort of education cause. So let's run that search. And again, we're filtering down the results that I already generated. So we just went from 4,300 list members to nine. And that effectively gave me a very filtered down version of this list containing people that I could realistically reach out to. Now it works both ways. You can also add to your list using this method. So let's say I had a different list, a prospect list that I wanted to add these folks to. I don't right now, but I'm gonna create a new one. Prospects, education. And I'm gonna save that list. And then you could continuously run searches like this for example, if I wanted to run another search from this list, maybe I want to look up people who are working in a specific industry or for a given charitable cause. I could run another filter of this broader list, generate the results, 
and then add them to the prospect list that I just created. So just to give you an idea of how powerful Power Search can be if you leverage it the right way. Now I can also come back now that I've created this search. And I could go to new search. And maybe I want to create a custom alert for my prospect list. So enter them in there and click search. Now I have some valuable news alerts on people that I'm likely going to be connecting with. I can click extended news and I can follow this and create a custom alert. And again, now that's shown right here. So we're tying together lists, alerts, and power search all in one. And I think that's actually a good place to leave off. So I'm going to uh, open this up so we can start answering some questions. I think we have Ashley on the line and she's going to be going through some questions and uh, I'll pass it over to her. Amazing. Thank you, Brian. We also have Grace Hall on the line as well, who will be answering some of the questions coming in. You should have a questions chat box. So if you do have questions, feel free to submit them there and we'll go through and answer some. Um, to this point, one of the questions that we received, someone says, in the new search, are we able to read and view articles from sites within paywalls, such as Wall Street Journal, Business Insider, et cetera? So we actually do receive some private business journals from some of our news vendors, such as LexisNexis. It depends on the actual business journal. Wall Street Journal, for instance, you would still need to enter credentials to be able to open a Wall Street Journal article, but one like Business Insider, you should have access to read the full article right through RELSI. Great, and another question we had is, how did you upload Fortune 1000 this morning? I tried to do the search and it's not available to me. So the Fortune 1000 list is a list that Brian had uploaded into his account prior to the webinar. But that said, it's something that we have compiled here. Um, and if you're interested in having it sync to your RELSI account, you can just reach out to your client success manager, either uh, Ashley, myself, or Alexa, and we'd be happy to have that added to your account for you. Another question we have here is, how easy is it to share articles with colleagues that don't have a RELSI account? So that's a great question. Um, Brian, if you'd like to just click into one of these articles here as an example, what you should be able to see is right in the toolbar there, an option to share that article. So it'll be right at the top. And what you would do is click on share, and this is going to give you a URL, and you can copy and paste this and send it to your uh, colleagues, even if they don't have a RELSI article, uh, login, excuse me. That said, we do limit the sharing um, outside of our, our license holders, so each article should be able to sh be shared up to three times. Um, one of the other questions we received is, is there a way to download multiple articles or links to these articles in Excel or another format? To this point, I'm not familiar with any way to download articles into Excel, but we can definitely touch base with our development folks to see if that's something that we're planning on doing in the future. Uh, great. Another question we have here is there's so much to know about 
RELSI and all of the features? Is there a more structured training program that starts from the beginning and walks participants through with exercises and so on? And um, so they can do work for their organization while learning. That is a great question. Um, with these webinar series here, we are hoping to you know, make little bite-sized learning sessions that focus on a few topics at a time. Um, but your client success manager, again, either Ashley, Alexa, or myself would be more than happy to connect with you one-on-one -on -one, um, and either do a, a longer in-depth training or put together some kind of individualized, customized training program um, where we review deeply every part of the tool and can put together some of those exercises as well. Um, someone asked if you can delete old lists. So Brian, if you just go within the list tool, um, there's a way to delete lists totally from your account. There's also another way where you can unfollow lists if you no longer want to receive news. So Brian, within the list tool, can you show the edit feature there? And you just hit delete lists. And you could either delete lists totally from your account or you could hide a list if you still want to keep it, but you don't want to see it pop up. So that's how to totally delete a list from your RELSI account. If you go back, Brian, to the news alert settings page, if you are following a list within the 360 alerts and you just want to shut off alerts, you could do so on this alert feeds page where you can unfollow one of the searches that you previously set up. Right. We have another question here. Can you show an example in Power Search of searching for people on foundation boards? So Brian, if you want to just navigate to Power Search here, the way you would be able to do this is in the second module where you see career and board. In the show box, you would go ahead and type in all board members. If you want to get more specific, you can. And then to search for those on foundation boards, you would click into charitable cause few boxes below. Go ahead and type in foundations. You can do a general search. You'll see we have some more specific type of foundations as well if you wanted to look for um, community-based foundations or private grant making foundations. And then when you click search, your results will populate. Of course, um, there's the other criteria here if you'd like to drill down those results a little further. Another question that we received is what is the difference between news alerts and extended news? So the news alerts that you set up, if you set up alerts on Bill Gates, for example, and you're following him within 360 alerts, you're going to receive all of the articles pertaining to Bill Gates when we tag him as an entity. Extended news is basically just showing you additional articles and updates that are connected to those original results. So for example, Bill Gates listed, obviously he's affiliated with Microsoft. You'll also see those types of articles under your extended news. We have a lot of requests for some specific Power Search examples. So Brian, if you want to navigate back to Power Search again here. Um, to follow up first on that foundation board uh, example we just did, you could fill in again all board members and then under charitable cause type in foundations. If you wanted to see which individuals on one of your lists currently serve as board members at a foundation, you would just include that list in the appears on box at the top. So, uh, for example, those Manhattan school board members, and then you could further um, drill down your list based on that criteria you've included. Another actually Power Search example, Brian, if you wanted to stay here in, in Power Search, someone asked if you could share an example to search for people affiliated with family offices. So you could search for people or organizations, but if we stay on the people tab, and Brian, if you just refresh and hit power search again to clear out these searches. Under company type, under career and board, 
Yeah, scroll down a little bit. Yep, right there. You have the option to search for multifamily office, single family office. So multifamily office is great, Brian. If you just want to select that and hit search, we'll just keep it generic. This will just show any individual affiliated with multifamily offices. And of course, you could further refine the search by looking for locations or roles. But again, this is very generic. And you could do the same thing if you're looking specifically under the organization tab, you look under company type. Another power search example we had a request for is how you would find organizations that have given to certain causes, um, for example, research on public health or scientific research. For this example, I would stay in the organization tab and I would come down to the donations and grant section and in charitable cause, you could go ahead and type in scientific research. Oh, and it might be <laughs> written science and technology research down below. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> and you could go ahead and click search and that'll show you a list of organizations who have given to that cause before. If you want to narrow that down by donation amount or donation years, you could do so. And if you want to get even more specific, you could utilize the keyword search there as well. So I believe that's all of the questions that we have. If you have any more, feel free to submit them now. But like Brian said, we will be sending, or GoToWebinar will be sending a survey right after this. You may receive it tomorrow as well. Please feel free to give us feedback on the speed, the topics. And like Brian mentioned, we will be hosting these every month. So if you have any ideas for future webinars that you'd like to see, feel free to give us some suggestions and we'd be happy to keep these going. And if there's any questions that we didn't get to, um, feel free to reach out, like Grace said, to myself, Grace or Alexa, your CSM, and we'd be happy to connect with you and further discuss. But thank you everyone so much for joining. Thank you, Brian, for hosting and Grace for answering questions and have a great day, everyone.